folks for day three of the Dell Futures Community Cup as the best players and streamers from across India are gathered to battle it out in Player Unknown's battlegrounds. I'm your host, Cap Nadia. With me, Kiran Shades, Nujibail, and Nikhil SK Brutality. We had an amazing two days last weekend as the best cafe teams battled it out with these streamers, and we had a surprising result. Let's take a look at the scoreboard as SK and Shade walk you through what we saw. Yeah, Danny S uh, in the lead, 855 points, has managed to peel away from the rest of the squads there on the scorecard. Sick Warriors closely behind, 680 points. I think his squad has been slightly unlucky. Uh, they did come a second there in that astronomical 1v3 clutch coming in from Arps. Wiki Rex, who did get off to a hot start with that chicken dinner up in a wrangle. Ever since then, though, they haven't really managed to get themselves into that top two situation. Hopefully, that changes. We are back on that map in which they did take the uh, dinner the last week around. It will be a wrangle. LXG2 has always been in that top five situation but haven't really been able to crack that top three. Hopefully, they've done those changes. They've managed to find time to review those wards and fix whatever was wrong there. Arps, uh, that's shooting pandas there, uh, 645 points. They, they had that one dinner with that beautiful clutch coming in. But then again, they've always been hovering around that top five place. Never really managed to make it past that finish line. Rotty one uh, sitting on 630 points, position six. They've been again consistently performing second place position finish uh, in that last map of week one. Google X God and Co. Uh, sitting on 580 points, Zone 1 on 560 points. The first cafe team to have taken that chicken dinner in week 1 as well. Hydroflick on 455, Cosmic YT on 375 to round up the first half of the leaderboard. Now, SK, you know, we've seen a lot of these, uh, you know, teams do really well, but Hydroflick is someone we expected a little higher up on the scoreboard instead of ninth place. True that, but then he did have that one catastrophic round in Sandhawk, which basically, I think they ended up 16th, mm -hmm. and he lost a huge lead right there. They were in the top five contenders, but that one Sandhawk map kind of threw them off balance, and then I think Team Synergy, you know, they've been losing one or two members early. They, they don't seem four strong in the later phases of the game, so I think they need to focus on that, focus on placements, because... These squads like Hydroflick and uh, Wikirex's squad and um, I mean Danny S's squad, they're very explosive in the early game, right? They go for these kills, but they end up trading most of the time in which in the later phases when you have a team member down, it's very difficult to fight a full uh, strong squad. So yeah, that they should focus on that, you know, focus on positioning rather than the early uh, pushes and, you know, losing members. So maybe take it easy up to like phase four and then push up and you know go crazy at the later phases of the game yep and of course everyone's had a lot of time to prepare from last sunday five whole days of prep and now we've got two final days of action in the dell futures community cup it's giving all these streamers and cafe players your everyday cafe players a chance to pursue their passions as dell futurists uh, help support new age careers driven by technology from traditional things like uh, photography, filmmaking to newer ones like esports and streaming. And now we've got so many of these guys, especially from the cafe, making a name for themselves here in the Dell Futures PUBG Community Cup. Map one is live at Angle. Let's jump in and see how the teams are faring so far. SK, walk us through the map and how everyone's spread out. All right, so the plane path was from Novo all the way to George Paul, and then we see the big split up of teams, right? We see Rotties then going back to that Milta comfortable situation. We see Danny has going, taking the whole of Milta City. Google has got playing the farm compound, surprising, because they did go Pachinki and they go, went for those early fights last time, but they seem to have eased up because, you know, there's a lot at stake now, so nobody wants to take the early fights. You can see the distance that each of these teams are maintaining, whether it's in the You want to see something interesting, actually. Team 3, which you see on your map, they're actually still parachuting down. They <laughs> took their sweet time. This is something we saw in one of the practice lobbies. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's something that's growing in popularity. People now taking their time to parachute down after seeing the circle, yeah. after seeing the other teams. And uh, I think this is going to be a pretty, pretty solid start for Zone 1 because... Um, oh, and in the distance, we see Cosmic Whitey taking someone down. Uh, let's let's jump to Cosmic. He's taken down Dynamic Giant. Solo kill on him. Beautiful play right there. First blood is... He's going to pick it up. I mean, he's not going <laughs> to... I think he's talking to DJ at this point of time. It's like, what's yeah, up, buddy? <laughs> he is talking to DJ at this point of time. He's like, Giant. where is it? Where is everybody? I want to try to interrogate his teammates' locations. I actually want to see where the rest of 
Uh, oh, they were in a car just outside the compound, right, uh, so next compound. Arconix and Trigger, nowhere to be, nowhere Southwest, to be found. Southwest, Southeast, yeah. sorry. They're close by, but... I think that was their scout who... And uh, they still haven't killed DJ. <laughs> he still got a single bullet in. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here, but it seems as though they're all just <laughs> dropping car 98s. He's <laughs> like, we'll let you live, just give us all your stuff. I think they're gonna let him live. Yeah. Or, or bleed out, you know. Either way, it is. I don't know. It, I, I think. Cosmic oh, he's, he's gonna dance. He's gonna dance. Oh, he's dancing. Right <laughs> <there>. <laughs> well, that's a bit of early fun there from Cosmic Whitey's squad, guys. You can check him out. All the streamers, by the way, are streaming right now for you, um, so you can watch their perspectives and have a good laugh as well. This that's this is positively hilarious. Yeah. Cosmic stream right now. I can get still having it. that interrogation going. There. I think Cosmic's gonna execute him, or he's gonna bleed out in about two seconds. But Unfortunate for Dynamic Chat, early death right there, and there we go, Cosmic with the first blood of the game. And that's good, you know, we usually see Cosmic coming in with a more passive game, camping yeah. around and then, you know, dying somewhere in the top 10, let's so, you move, know, in uh, the action. Yeah, let's move back to the aerial view and uh, see what's happening, because the circle did shift a lot towards the north side. Yeah, right? we've got, I think, five or six teams who are really out of position here, we've got LXG 2, we've got uh, game, uh, Gaming Grounds 1, then we've got Danny S, then squad six, which is Rotti's main squad. They are the furthest away, I think, at Milta Power. Uh, yeah, that's gonna take them a while to get back and they're gonna have to be crossing a whole bunch of teams over here, depending on the path they choose. If they go via Lipovka, they're gonna hit, uh, you know, Wikirex's squad going up and that's not something they wanna do. Yasnaya is completely under Hydroflix control, you know, which is great because they've usually lost players early on, but having Yasnaya all to themselves means they would have had a good amount of time to loot up and be prepared for what's going to be coming their way. Now, uh, I think if we turn to SK, uh, we've got Squad 18, that would be Google X God, driving very close to Zone 2, but not going into that compound. That's the compound most people just avoid. Yeah, they just avoid because it's got too many walls, too many of those half walls, but Backtrack did lose control there. So they're going to move ahead, smart move, uh, but are they going to take the yellow houses? Because Zone 2 hurt them for sure, right? It all depends on whether they want to take the fight or not, but I think Aram is going to move away from Zone 2. So we're going to miss that fight. Uh, not that interesting and then in the distance I think we see team 10 right driving to driving right next to Wikirex. Yep, that's Parallel. why I came here because uh, Vades is right above them. I'm fairly certain both cars can hear each other at this point. I think Blaze is trying to go a little higher to make sure he's above the ridge and they definitely gonna spot out Vades there. I think Vades is on a bike if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't see there though either of them looking to want to take this fight this early on. Both of them scouts as uh, they think they're pretty much job done. They go yeah. just look for a nice uh, ridge or a compound to occupy early in the game. Okay, here we go. I think we might see a fight if these guys stop, but it doesn't seem like they're gonna stop. Uh, Rotti's then the main squad moving past Blitz Zone. So yeah, NGU is not gonna take a shot, uh, but oh my God, he's looted up. Like, look at this guy. He's got a scar with 170 ammo. Like, he's set for the rest of the game. 210, actually. 40 plus 170. <laughs> so, he's I think sorted for life. Everyone's decently kitted. Dreadrack's got a vector on him. Snorlax got another scar. I think this is the first time we've actually not lost anyone this early on in oh, the game. Oh, wait. We see Roy again going to pass uh, NGU as well. Is he going to take a shot this time? This is going to be hella close. But no, he's not going to take a shot. That was actually easy picking for uh, NGU. All right, turning your attention to the first airdrop of the match. It is in the water and we're going to get Elok moving towards it. It's an arm full level 3 kit and ghillie suit. But what's interesting, it's a 4x unfortunately, not the big 8 times. Uh, but hey, an arm still an arm and Elok from Gaming Grounds 2 in Pune is going to be very, very happy with this haul and his teammates do have him covered. There's nobody sever any side, so he should be able to make it out very, very easily. And they're gonna have a good time trying to put that to use. Yep, with most of the players already making their way into the circle, you see I think about 80% of uh, the uh, players in the server already in that first circle. Uh, this That AWN can definitely go to work early on. Most of these players are gonna be looking for those long range duels. We see a drive by, in fact, Backtrack laying the shots in. Joker does get tagged down a little low. There's ITDC also moving in that general direction on that far side, but uh, I think that's pretty much 
much going to be the end of that exchange there unless Joker wants to turn around and get a piece of the action here early on. Oromolov moving in the distance there. There is, I think that was squad number 12 there in the distance. Not really sure. But uh, that's pretty much going to be Google Legs God and Go continuing with the loot up here. And I'm a ghostly boy. Yeah, we've got a bad situation here for Rotty Zen. Two real contender teams, Wikidex and Rotty, both in a firefight. Wikidex is full squad coming in. Rotty playing with a man down. And Anon Pada and Kadak Londa both have been taken down as Vades and the rest of the team are making their way in. Ghostly Boy did a beautiful job of holding them off and it's all going to come down to how Vades can help capitalize on this situation with the flank. I absolutely love this. They know for a fact they had the knocks in but that's disciplined play there. They're not going to look to go for that flush. We've seen too many situations where 1vx just ends up being horrendous for the team with the X players. Oh, oh and I'm going to finish uh, Ghostly Boy. Yeah, but Kadak Lawler just keeps the wrong side. Vades goes in in, takes out Kadak and knocks out Rotti as well. It's just down to Anand Panda all alone. If they're going to be coming in from behind as well, Mav and Co. And that's going to be the end of Rotti's gen. Finishing 20th. I think that all but takes Rotti out of the contention unless he gets two back to back chicken dinners. Yeah, Rotti's done. They were sitting nice and good there in third position on that leaderboard and they're going to end up 20th here. Nice. In no points. Yeah. No I'm points, no kill points. I think this is it for Rotti's Den's main team. Yeah. Unless they come up huge in the next two games. In the next three games, actually. So there is still like, a, you know, big But they need minimum yeah. two wins to yeah. be in and contention. It, now we see Flash the Alpha. Is he going to spot out the whole team of ITGC? Yep, I think Prodot's going to take a few shots at Deeraj. Yeah, Deeraj there. I think he spots out uh, Prodot there in the... Uh, balcony and uh, again through that choke not the best of positions to keep re-peaking there and i don't expect prodos to go for that peak yet again team one though question comes do they look to push this compound this early on we already saw one team just straight up move out of contention oh there we go death. there you go dora does get the knock in onto prodos beautiful headshot from long range but then again early fights when you're taking long range it's easy to get that res off unless the other team is looking to push just like how LXG1 is on the chase. Now we see Flash the Alpha. He does have a clue where ITGC is. Is he gonna spot he's gonna spot out ITGC, but whips a lot of shots right there. Uh, That's Flash a whole the Alpha. UMP clip there. It's a bit surprising and, and beautiful comeback by ITGC to punish him for that mistake. Yep, a big, big whiff there and ITGC just turns around, lays in with the AR, gets the knock in and the cleanup onto Flash there. And LXG won how the fight tables have turned. The fight turns around and they're the ones now with the man disadvantage there. ITGC gets down with three and he continues to spray away a Brodosh. So much damage taken in, he's going to turn to continue fight there and uh, frost Puts does eventually get knocked down and i think that's pretty much down to only deeras there for lxg now and now Tuskador is also making a play from behind he's actually gotten in behind them he's going to see itgc jump out gets a bit of damage but the smoke coming in just in time there uh, to help him out I mean, early on, that was LXG's fight to take there, but ITGC, they just stand their ground, take that fight, they lose two, and now Dora, he's in the compound there, he does have players who will be eventually moving in, ITGC does get on the Dora with a clean up, so LXG continue to fight back here, and now the question comes, both these teams early on, they continue fighting this. One of them definitely is getting eliminated in 19th position. Not the situation both teams want to be in. And I expect them to just slowly back away from the fight and look for the position. Yeah, because they do it's two for two right now between LXG and uh, ITGC. Not that early fight you wanted to take, but you know, it, it's just that compound the uh, LXG team wanted to push it. Unfortunate for them, they lost the two members early because of bad positioning, right? Because Flash had the yep. upper hand but whiff that whole shot. And in the distance, I think there's another fight brewing at uh, the bottom of Yasnaya. Yeah, that is, I think, Blitz Zone. They're taking in a lot of shots. Uh, they, I think even one player gets knocked <laughs> in more games. I think Murki knocks his own teammate out with the car. Yeah. I, mean, ev I think everything's going wrong there for uh, Blitz Zone. <laughs> Yeah, they've never really uh, were able to get off to a good start even in week number one. We've seen time and again third party becoming a big part of these matches. Unfortunately, it's been time and again 
that isn't a luxury that Blitz have had. They've pretty much ended up taking these long drawn fights and eventually getting flushed out by squads. And uh, yeah. looks like if you this look map to the center of the map, there's a whole bunch of squads 14, 11, 7, 19, all very close to each other. And that could turn into a bloodbath very, very soon. Uh, so that's a fight we're going to be keeping an eye on in just a few seconds. Yep, excellent drawing, quite a bit of fire there, but he does have Hades and Co. Uh, who will be uh, closing in soon here. Uh, we do uh, have excellent who's probably uh, heading towards Stolber there, but the rest of his teammates are under fire from squad number 19. That is Sick Warriors team and looks like they're going to take a quick pit stop. Meanwhile, in the back side, we're seeing another knock coming in. That's HK22 there, but Hades should be able to heal back up here. The question now is, Axelin is making his way in. He should be able to find a, a pretty much a compound for Team 14 to take. But the question is, will his teammates be able to get out of this predicament? Yeah, yeah and we got Vades and Vicky Toshin is on the side. Vades, wrong side of the tree as Scourge takes him out now. It's all up to Vicky to try and salvage this situation. Vicky also poor positioning. He gets taken down as Vades gets knocked out by the nade there. And this is going horrible for another top contender. Yep, Vicky Rex as well as Vades both end up going down. MAB has been spotted out as well. Takes a bit of shots from Hades there. Should have been able to clean that up. Goes for the shot, gets the headshot and the kill there. And squad number 11, Wiki Rex, another top three team out early here on Erangel. And the significance of that encounter, right? Wiki Rex, top five squad, gets knocked out there by uh, Arps, who's himself contending for a top few position. So that is getting points for your kills while making sure your competition goes out of the game as well. Huge, huge consequences of that. Now we've got uh, LXG2 here against uh, Google X God. During your predictions before the match, you did say the cafe teams would have had time now to look and study their uh, counterparts. Yes, shots coming in. Johnny Walker able to, able to win that fight despite and never having the peekers advantage, but immediately traded by Google X got there. One for one. Both teams losing players early on, and we see some more contenders there under siege early on. That being said, those Sequoia and Co, they're in a firefight of themselves. Yeah, Google X got does watch Kakashi driving away and should be able to safely make make it out. I think he's heading towards uh, the cliffs there just northwestern of Yasnaya. Talking about Yasnaya, it's time and again, I've seen these northern, the northeastern, northwestern circles end up either in those Yasnaya fields or in that area just south of Stolberg. Yep, here ITGC squad under fire from all sides. Proto gets knocked down from the car itself. They lost a tire got out too soon and that's going to be the end of ITGC. They fall to Gaming Grounds 1, two free kills. They're going to be happy about that one. Yeah, they didn't really have the best of starts there, ITGC. They did go up against LXG1 who were pushing them. They did really good there to uh, ensure that they got two kills, managed to walk away with that with two alive, but unfortunately the number is disadvantaged just eventually getting to them and uh, they're gonna end up in 17th position we see team number seven going for this firefight up against cosmic, cosmic Boy, yeah. and so a couple of players speaking in there smokes going down and now i think mlg uh, needs to find some cover himself because he just might be under quite a bit of firepower himself yep uh cosmic's team uh, they're in the circle but it's just two of them they don't have too much cover and i'm fairly certain Squad 7's got much better loot than them, right? They're going to be looking for redemption for the rest of Rotti's cafe for this match. But it seems as though Cosmic's going to make it away with 24 HP and but here's one the thing. If he goes up remaining. that mountain, he's going to be exposed again. He's got to realize he's got to stay as low as possible. And that's exactly what he's doing. But then in the distance, we have RP's squad as well right behind Cosmic. And time and again, we've talked about this. These kind of fights early on means that you're going to be exhausting a lot of utility. You're going to be probably losing a few helmets, vests, and unless you're going to be able to replenish them as the rounds go on eventually. Even if you have the numbers disadvantage moving into those final circles, those uh, not having the utility as well as the heals are going to be detrimental to ensuring that you might not just be able to get over that finish line. Then we have the last member of the LXG squad actually creeping. I don't think they spotted him out. Yeah, 
<laughs> I don't think they have somehow he's managed to get himself into this compound but with the circle pushing he's gonna have to move, make his way out soon he does not have too many heals either and he can hear the footsteps here FTGD he spots out the first player out trigger discipline doesn't really want to take this fight just yet he does have the adrenaline shot but then he's only has that four. one first aid yeah, yeah face four. that's four a lot jump. of damage coming in question comes now he spotted the entirety of team three moving out does he shoot or does he just slowly try and continue creeping behind enemy lines? And he's moving straight towards Zephyrs. Like Zephyrs is right in front of him, but he's gonna chill out, take a first aid. Look at Zephyrs, he's just about 20 meters away. Right? Under the bridge. Yeah, Diaz, he's, prob he's probably doing the best thing uh, that his team can expect from him right now. It's just so wide. we have another ahead. big yeah. contender going down there. Oh, big trouble for Danny S's squad. We're, we still have, what, 13 teams left. Accelerate gets taken down. Danny S is down and it's all up to Roy, if I'm not mistaken, alone to do the rest for his team. This is bad, bad news. He's going to have to camp for a while. Sadie Boy knocked himself down in the distance there. And that is disaster. We've, I think we've lost all our top five teams now. Roy, no, we still got Sick Warrior and uh -huh. IR and they're going straight, Ad Aditya is going straight towards the IR team, but he has a ghillie suit on him. Uh, he's fully geared up. But a ghillie suit is not going to help if you're coming at an enemy with a ghillie Oh, but he, he seems, I think he's, he's scouting the compound out right now. It's exactly what he's doing. IR not taking shots at him. Yeah, Aditya is uh, yeah, scouting the compound. back to yep. Sikori and Co, they've had some nice show of individual prowess in that first week of matches, but then they've never really been able to convert that into solid team play and chicken dinners. Oh, and with him. all the top contenders being out now and I are under pressure here. The AWM, which is the 3x though, uh, from long range, Aditya is going to uh, make his presence felt, but uh, that's going pretty much going to be the end yeah, of the Yeah, we've engagement. got Google X squad completely exposed from behind to Team 3, which which is Zone Cafe 1. Now these guys, they won the last match of last weekend and they're going to be looking at, uh, you know, capitalizing on that. But they are under fire now. From and Nandy, like Nandy all the way behind Google X's uh, squad, actually taking shots from the hill. If we can just quickly look at him, he's got the whole vision of uh, Google X guard, high ground, and he's in the circle. So he's going to play spoil sport, take out the vehicles of uh, Google X card, he's gonna take out the second U.S. as well. So they're just in a shroud of smoke, confused where these shots are coming coming from. And uh, there's another fight brewing as well, yep. just a little off the What's uh, interesting is situation. this is like full cafe fight over here. <laughs> we got Zone Cafe versus Blitz Zone versus another Zone team. Right, so they're all in one big Mexican standoff as we saw Murgi and Ash trade each other with Nox. Now NGU, he's got Vacuum Ghost down as that is going to be the end of Zone 2 as he's going to figure them, uh, finish them out as FGD has also gone down as it's turning very, very bad for Zone 1. They were in such a great position and now it's just looking downhill for them. NGU did a fabulous job there. He turns around, gets the initial knock onto one of the players of Team 3 there who are completely isolated yeah. from the remainder of the And right players. now they're in the smoke. Normite hasn't realized. He just passed the smoke with two people being dressed. He's panicking because of all the bullets around him. He doesn't realize where they're coming from. He's trying desperately to scout. Doesn't realize they're just a bit behind him on the right. If we switch to fear, uh, he himself has also chosen to ignore the smoke, but I think he's finally realized there's somebody in or around that as another smoke is popped, giving away that position, but he gets shot from up above on the mountain by Nandy once again trying to play third party and get some kills for his team. Yeah, there's too much third party going on right now. Here, I think he eventually spots him out, gets the knock onto Oromol of there. There is Google X God, but with the smoke dissipating soon, question now comes, does he go ahead and stick the nade? Oh, beautiful nade there, and I think that should be enough to finish both of them off. Oh, yes, he gets is. it. But here's the question, I think he cocked a nade and he still kept it in his hand. I hope it doesn't blow up or come back to bite him in the backside. But beautiful stuff there, 90 once again from above. Raining destruction. Yep, the nade getting really those beautiful kills. And yeah. the end, he's gonna get knocked and uh, cleaned up regardless there by Nandi. Who you see? Yeah, we, go, we got another fight going here. Aditya pulls out the arm, takes down Helium, who's on his second knock right now. They're gonna hold the Stalba compound. Another top team. Gets a, gets a body shot on MLG and oh my god, Captain Pons with a huge grenade kill there, taking two guys with, uh, with that grenade and Sick Warrior still in the top 10. 
Yep, and, and now, with five kills. Yeah, turning our attention over to RP's team 14. They've got team number nine in their sight, but Arps takes a huge chunk of damage there from Vimal. I think with the sniper rifle, and now their position has been given away. Squad nine moving up. Gaming grounds one from Pune. Looking to be another to... cafe team to do well, but Sahil okay, with a disastrous get... move. Yeah, let's quickly move to Hydroflick, who's actually holding team number 10 in the distance. They do have a level 3 helmet on Saumitra, but uh, I think Hydra just tagged that level 3 helmet. So he's going to hold this uh, compo strong and they have to push in. They have a minute 40, but I think they have a solid position right now, team uh, Hydroflick. Uh, they have the whole of the Stalbo compound with the warehouse. And they seem to be, the only way you can take them out is if you're on high ground and team number 10 is actually going all the way around. Yeah, Cosmic and Cruiser here have been spotted out by Axelin as Arps' team looks to capitalize on their good position. They're already at four kills and Nate going out towards Cosmic. Uh, I think it should land on Cruiser. No, just a little short. They're right over the ridge and Axelin has no idea where they've gone. He doesn't realize they're already above him. If they turn together, they might be able to do something. But Hades' place is knocked out in the distance. That might deter Axelin from making any further, uh, you know, move on these guys. And Roy, looks like he's going to be... He's still alive! Yeah, he's still alive. He's going to be creeping in. On to uh, LXG2 right now. There's Joker and Nandy who've been sitting in this position for a very long time now. Yeah, Cosmic Squad, by the way, has run into Sick Warrior Squad as Sick Warrior gets knocked out in the zone and Kakashi gets finished by Cruiser. This is not what they were hoping for at this point. Another strong start, and all of a sudden, when it comes to those final 10 teams, the final 2 3 circles, that is when they've not been able to convert. Sequoia will eventually go down to the zone, and now, yet again, they're going to be crippled moving into the latter stages of this game here on Erangel. Yep, huge play there from Cosmic and Cruiser. Uh, the two of them coming up very big, just the two kills on them, but they're going to be happy, you know, they're doing themselves proud, um, you know. PC isn't really Cosmic's platform of choice, but he's he's proven a lot of people wrong by knowing how to play PUBG yep. and I mean, surviving. He just took out Kaka, 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 Ex exactly. Kaka one of the most uh, exactly. players in the scene. And but they're, I think, in a bit of trouble because I think there are the healing items. There yeah, are the they helmets, are the there are the items. armor. <laughs> that, that was something I was actually uh, thinking about uh, earlier today. I was like, hey, if this was TPP by any chance, <laughs> Cosmic YT and Co. would have definitely done e an even better job. Not that they're already... Yeah, Cruiser are. took some damage, taking away whatever little armor he had left. Now, he and Cosmic, they are barely hanging on for dear life. And they're sandwiched between uh, Sick Warrior Squad and Arps right below them. Yeah, Cruiser have no helmet be. either. They're not the best of situations. Moving into the final circle, the circle does move a little more to the western side. We have team number two. We have Roy who's managed to sneak in as well. Circle favoring him. Squad number 14 there towards the north. They're still running three strong and should have a good position moving into the final stage. And this is exactly how Danny S's squad always manages to get some good points on the board. Even if they're down to one man, they just manage to survive. Not Nomad gets taken down there by NGU, who himself is now under fire by two squads. And that's not going to end well for him anytime soon. Let's turn to Hydro Flick and what's he doing? They're, They're going to try and move into position because they do have the better uh, ridge here with a punch, like with a whole lot of rocks. And they're going to, I think Hydra is going to spot out Amrul. Oh my god, Cruiser and uh, Cosmic have both snuck up behind Adi and Captain Pons, but it's not going to be enough as Cruiser got spotted out. And that's going to be an easy double kill for Adi. Beautiful spray down. Getting them to Hydroflex. very, very important kills. Yeah, Hydroflex is going to play Gatekeeper right now for team number uh, 10, which is... That is GG2? GG2, GG2. GG2. all right. So both the, uh, in fact, another cafe team who's managed to get themselves into this top seven, top six situation here. Long range nade from Elo. Not really going to uh, find its target there, but he is going in for the loop around. They're still running three, I think all four players still up on squad number 10, as well as IR. The last two remaining squads who do have all four up are up in a fire fight themselves. Yep, uh, you know, I think they did themselves a big favor by taking out Weezy there. Uh, and that's going to cause a bit of trouble for Hydroflake because they're not going to want to sacrifice that one member despite being this late in the game. But I like what um, uh, Cole Zara is doing, right? He's still keeping an eye out on their uh, flank. I think he's going to spot out Blaze if he stays just a little longer, but t turns his attention the wrong way at the last second. But 
you know, they still got four strong in both their squads. Uh, good haul. I think three kills here on Hydroflick and how, how much does the other squad have GG2? I think they do have a couple of kills themselves. Yeah, GG, uh, actually no, GG2 is on zero kills. They're just playing for oh, position There we go, Prajwa point. spots out. Blade gets a couple of shots in 45 hit points only. But Amit Kolzer are actually knocking out um, Saumitra and then completely finishing him off for those points. Another beautiful headshot coming in from there and knocking out Amrul as well. Just outside the zone, 50 seconds. Will GG2 come back to save uh, Amrul or it, are they going to move It's very difficult on? because GG2 on the other side, they're pressed in by LXG too. Right, we got Blaze and Adok on this side and Joker and Nandi actually push them back. So they're not going to be going anywhere to the left either, right? They're a bit stuck. Yeah, and there is Roy waiting in the middle of all of this, just waiting for that opportune moment to try and third party some of these squads. They are down to two members on, in fact, both these squads here. If they decide to take a firefight up against each other, that could be the opportunity for Roy to pounce in and get a couple of positions ahead here in this uh, final part of a Definitely. Roy is going to have to decide, is it worth getting five points for a kill? Aditya is going to push towards Axelin's team. I think Axelin's going to, Hades is going to spot out Aditya. But it seems like Axelin didn't make the push. N nice positioning there from Aditya. He's gonna move left, use the, the gilly advantage. And the bush is gonna smoke decoy unless he's gonna take this fight or not. Yeah, smoke's going down there. They do have players grouping up here for squad number 14. Arps moving in This as is gonna well. be a Yeah, but look at this. Fight. Hydra Flick is moving in from behind for the cleanup as Weez takes down Captain Pawns from behind and Aditya is in deep, deep trouble. He's gonna get finished off there by Hades plays and Sick Warrior squad leaves us at fifth position. Not what they were hoping for, but a good salvage job considering how bad things went in the middle. Indeed, and uh, we're down to the top four squads. The 11 players are alive in and the And Roy server. is still alive. Roy is still Roy alive. Roy is still alive. IR though, they were four strong and they're gonna lose two players early on here. Surge as well as Hades players able to get the knocks in. Now, do they go in for this push? They have spotted out Hades there. Amit with that ATX there, long range. Hydra not able to uh, get that cleanup just yet. Scourge though will get the cleanup onto Wheezy. Smokes going down there. Hydra looking for an opportunity to turn around. I think he knows where Roy is gonna be playing in from, but Squad number two, LXG, they've literally been sitting there this entire time, not making a single whiff of noise. Yep, the mountainside there was scattered with smokes for a second. You couldn't see for more than 200 meters, and now it's down to the final few. We've got LXG sitting right next to Roy, doing absolutely nothing. Both of them are more than happy to wait it out for uh, ARPS and Hydra to fight it out and give them one extra position for those precious 10 extra points. Yep, I think IR here is gonna end up a little unlucky. I think they're gonna be forced into this fight versus squad number 14. You already see Hades play on that side of the smoke and as soon as the smoke dissipates there, 14 are gonna look to push in. Question comes to uh, the squad number 12 as well as uh, squad number two. Can they do enough here to ensure that 14 doesn't really move into that top three situation with all four players alive. Oh, I think Hades has spotted out Hydra Flake and that's not going to be good for them. They were hoping to have snuck in this fight. Hades plays, takes one to the face. But I think the level three helmet there saving him as Coldzair and Hydra Flake, they're trying to salvage the situation. Yep, they're going to be uh, using quite a bit of heals there, expanding the first aid and uh, probably going to expect round number two to resume real shortly, SK. Yeah, we see, I mean, there's five seconds now, the zone's going to start pushing in, but I think Roy's, I think Roy's luck is about to run out. Look at Arps here. Arps has moved all the way up to Roy, and Roy does fire early on. It gets caught here. Now Joker and Nandi in front of him. Arps takes a huge chunk of blue zone damage there, but gets the flank onto uh, Joker there, and it's a one-for-one -for -one trade there. Yeah, and Amit's actually going to steal two kills from Arps right there. So it is a 2v3 if Arps gets the res. It's going to yeah. be a 2v4, and Arps but also taken a lot of blue that's actually damage. really smart play because Colzer has stole both of uh, RP's knocks. Indeed, yeah. and now he's looking to get more damage done. They fought out one of the knocked players there. Scourge ends up getting cleaned up there, but he takes a little bit of zone damage himself. Turns around in the nick of time. Hydroflake spraying away, does get the knock in himself, but Amit Colzer has already gone down. IR, oh, 10 HP, can't really land the spray down. Hades there goes huge, and that is Team Arps and Co. picking up their second chicken dinner, the first team to do so here in the Dell Futurist Community Open.
I mean, it was crazy there with, uh, you know, almost almost yeah. potato in that shot in the end. But he did lose a bunch of kills, right? So look at look at Cole Zara. He, got, he has six kills on him. So he did steal almost two or three kills uh, off. So yeah, uh, I mean, good play coming from uh, Hades in the, in the end. Because Hades yeah. went for that huge flank, which kind of helped them secure that win. Because that was close. If, uh, I think, I mean, if Hydra Flick got that heal off, that would have been crazy. I mean, it would have been insane. Like, if you would have got one first aid off and then traded, because he, yeah. he did take the repick with 10 HP, not the smartest of moves, but hey, Despite high that he, intense. He, he got yeah. his opponent down just to a sliver of yeah. health. So, you know, that's one of those things that can but go you know either what, way. You know what the best thing here is? Roy, MVP. Yeah. Hands down is the MVP of this match. I mean, yes, he you can be like, he proned all the way, but guess what? He played for those position points. He stayed in the top four. Look at him. He's They've got two, they've got only a single kill, but he mm -hmm. got their team all yeah. the way I th I from, the, I think, 15. They're looking at an extra 100 points yeah. this map just because, because of the Sick Warrior ended up fifth. So mm -hmm. again, the leaderboard is one, two, three. I think Ops might catch up that lead which Danius has, but I think this extra hundred because of Roy, yeah, I think Danius is going to stay in the lead, and it all comes down to like the second map, Sandhawk, which is again going to be a crazy, you know, ev every Sandhawk map we've had till now has been the most entertaining because you've yeah. got all non-top five teams coming out and yeah. winning the Sandhawk games. So it's very exciting because that's the whole point of and that I, future. I, I, right? I have a feeling Sick Warrior did DC there because he went out of the zone and mm -hmm. got knocked. So I have a feeling he did disconnect. And uh, yeah, so I mean, good play coming from there. It's like spoil sport, right? Cosmic came, took, took down Kakashi, Sick Warrior died to the zone. And then I think it was IR who and just then, snuck then, up in the last sandwich. second. Yeah, 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 it was the last second. and. And it, it sucks for Adi because he was well kitted. Mm -hmm. He had an arm, he had level three, everything. But hey, you're sandwiched between two very powerful squads and you know, unfortunate positioning for them. So I want to see what they can do on map number two. But you know, big ups to Roy because mm -hmm. he came, I don't know, man. I saw them die like 14th or something yeah. like that. And Roy came all the way to fourth. So good play coming from there. And I think there. that's what they've done almost every time when they've lost more than two people. Uh, early on, they just play it safe. They don't take the unnecessary fights. And I think that's the kind of discipline which a lot of these teams, if they integrate that into what they're already yeah. doing, don't take those unnecessary fights. Because I think Roy left. Like the moment he saw the number advantage, like he, they were yeah. losing the number, he left. He, he turned around and didn't away. try and clutch. Because you know that placements are going to be really important in these he last few a matches. Kill, that's right? five points. If he finishes five points above, five positions above, that's 50 points, yeah. right? So you got to just do the simple math. And figure out what your team modes. You and want again, to be a hero, LXG, you want to come through. LXG, yeah. right? Uh, third place, not able to finish yet another map. I think this is the third third time I've seen them in the top five or yeah. top three, yeah. and they haven't yeah. been able to finish a match. I think Zone's going to be a bit disappointed with yeah, uh, Zone you know, went how down, they finished off. Zone went down pretty early, right there. But I mean, Sandhawk, man. We've seen yep. three different winners or two different winners on Sandhawk, and hopefully, you know. My money's on a new winner again. What, what do you yeah. think? Yeah, I think there's going to be a new winner yet again. It's <laughs> been a com so th this has been the pretty much the story of every single day. First, you have the 8x8 map yeah. where it's going to be disciplined play, calculated yeah. rotations, drops, loot in, final stages being played out. And Sanox is just a bloodbath. Right? Yeah, yeah, you take, the, gameplay. Take, take, take your rule book, throw it out of the window. It's all guns blazing there. But, and that's exactly what I expected. But you know what? Uh, the circle, let's just talk about how this Erangle circle ended. Mm -hmm. That is one of the weirdest terrains to like play in, yeah. right? Stalbur. Or, I, I, uh, like, I, I, and yeah, I, I didn't call it Because there though. is no point where you are completely hidden, hidden from anyone. Yeah. If you're shooting one guy, there's another two people that can shoot you. But you know, uh, these guys, man, uh, Axelin, Ops, and you know the shooting panda guys, they held a very uh, weird position as well. It was it was a mixture of high and low ground, and they had the only rock cluster, I think, in the map. That's what enabled them to go like split. And they split up and yeah, fought I, two different yeah. squads there. And it was 3-1 split, because Hades went all the way around. Yes, it cost him three team members, but you know, uh, he clutched it at the mm -hmm. end because just about it, just about it. Imagine if Cole I, th I, think, I think the pan helped a lot because I saw him <laughs> shooting from behind and th there was a big target on the yeah. pan and I'm like, okay, you know, if that wasn't there, this would have ended a good ten seconds ago. But yeah, uh, let's let's you know get into the score and you know calculate and see what happens just before our sign off map. So we're excited. We mm -hmm. want to see a different leader, but I think Roy might have just yeah, I think, I think Danny snuck in yeah. that amount of points, you know, to keep Danny S in the lead. But guess what? The lead is closing down. There's a lot more people gunning for that 
final victory and uh, you know the prize of being called the champions of uh, the Dell Futures Community Cup. So yeah, let's go. To let's move on to map four. Yep. And see see what's in store. Yeah, guys, we're going to be back in just a little bit as the best streamers and cafe teams are coming together to compete in the Dell Futures PUBG Community Cup. Dell Futures as a platform is enabling young people across India to follow new age careers, to follow their passions driven by technology, whether it's art, photography, filmmaking, app development, and now esports and gaming. And we're seeing so many guys coming out of nowhere and making a name for themselves. That's it for map one on day three. I'm Cap Nadia, Kiran Shade Slayer, and Nikhil SK with me. We're gonna be back in just a few minutes for map two, Sunhawk, where things are gonna get crazy.